This is Monkey World, the largest ape and monkey rescue center on the planet. With every animal comes a story, some funny, some shocking, dramas great and small. Today on Monkey Life, baby orangutan Jolie gets the VIP treatment on her journey from Russia to Monkey World. Fingers crossed for a safe journey and a happy landing. And at the park, there's a toddler tantrum for Eddie and Paddy's chimp group. In the past 20 years, Monkey World has rescued and rehabilitated over 200 apes and monkeys. 11 of these are orangutans. These primates are part of an endangered species breeding program. And Monkey World is now the creche for baby orangutans needing a new home. More than 1,600 miles away in Russia, Keeper Mike has arrived in Moscow. Thank you. I'm Mike, how are you? He's on an assignment to collect Jolie, an eight-month-old baby orangutan who will soon join the Monkey World crash. Mm -hmm. She lives in a zoo in the heart of the capital city. Jolie was abandoned by her mum and is being hand-reared by keepers at the zoo. Orangutan babies are very delicate and need specialist really? care. At Monkey World, Mike played foster dad to other baby orangs. So he's the perfect choice to collect the eight-month-old and he's very keen to meet her. And who knows what's going to happen. She may come to me, she may be frightened, she may stay away, she may not want to come to me. It may take a couple of days before she decides she wants to come to me. She may decide she doesn't ever want to come to me. So, I don't know. It's um, the unknown round that door. So let's see your Where's baby. Going? Yeah. Jolly? Where yeah. is she? In here? Yeah. Here. Oh, go on, you go first. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Aren't you beautiful? Aren't you a big girl, too? It'll take oh, Jolie some time girl. to get used to hearing Mike's Jolie. voice. He's also brought along a T-shirt so she can get familiar with his smell. You are now officially a keeper at Monkey World, OK? It's a rather a nice one. And it smells of me a little bit as well. <laughs> so the smell of me probably isn't quite so good. But seeing a new face has made the youngster a bit unsure of what's going on. If, if you look at her, you'll, you'll see that she's doing things, and then she sort of looks at me to see if I'm still here and paying her attention. Um, and probably the best thing I can do now is, is not try to go to her, but see whether she will approach me. Hopefully, in a couple of days' time, she, she will be coming to me and allow me to pick her up and, and be... English mum or English dad to her. So it's good. I think she's going to be a shy girl. Back at the park, Jolie's future home is now complete. Over the last two months, the team has been building a new outdoor enclosure where Jolie will live with the other four orangutans. Alison hopes the space will be perfect for them. The most brilliant enclosure, I think, that we've built to date. I know it's only small, it's an orangutan nursery, but I am so pleased and impressed with how this has come together. I'm, I'm really, really happy with it, and, we'll, and hopefully all of the guys will be too. <laughs> to ensure that these critically endangered primates can move around their new enclosure in as natural a way as possible, much thought has been given to the height of the platforms, poles, and trees, and the distances between them. This really is meant to start feeling to them kind of like a forest that they can swing in and move around in just like an orangutan wants to, which is to walk through the canopy. Carrying so, their body upright as opposed to bent over like the chimp on all fours. You know, if you think about it, orangs sort of walk through the forest with their, their body held upright. It's very different than a chimp or a gorilla. So we're hoping that these guys, you see, on the smaller scale, actually this nursery teaches us a lot. So we've got the babies, and we can see what encourages them to go up, where we should start placing climbing apparatus and things to swing on. So the nurseries, it, it's a big step for us because it could actually change the way we do the rest of the park. 
For orangutans in the wild, it's a risky business living so high up in the tree canopy, especially for the babies. So for this enclosure, the park doesn't want to take any risks. We've put in safety nets underneath the top of yeah, the towers. We did. So. <laughs> Lee, Lee, Lee got quite, quite keen on that. Really, you start looking that high and, and the vision of a Shouting, little guy losing it. taking a plunge, yeah. Wild animals take a lot of falls. Orangutans, you know, it's not that they never fall out of the trees in the forest. In fact, a lot of wild animals that field biologists um, look at have broken limbs, especially the gibbons. Um, so, you know, taking a plunge isn't unheard of, just like, you know, people do. They make mistakes too, and as they're growing up and learning, it isn't unheard of to, you know, underestimate how far away your next handhold is and to take a spill. I mean, but you've got to take risks. Yeah. I mean, they've got to be taught to climb. They've got to learn how to climb. And, 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 you know, life's a risky business. So you really give them what they should have, and then we'll take start Take every precaution, yeah. And, and that, that's the best we can do. A few last touches are put in place while the nursery orangs keep a close eye on proceedings, especially naughty nine-year-old Gordon. There is one problem we could run into. If Gordon realizes... I that, predict he will, too. ...that this turf, this turf has just been put down, it's coming up. He might have fun spending so, the whole day rolling up all no of the No point turf. being heartbroken about it. If Gordon discovers the turf, we're just going to watch him roll it up. And we'll roll it back down at the end of the day. <laughs> we'll just have to get over it. But it could happen. We could have that little disaster. It could happen. And while the cheeky orang contemplates whether he should destroy, over in Hananya's chimp group, the boys are always on a mission to cause havoc. Hananya's group of 18 are quite young, and some are lacking more in the brain department than others. It's home to five teenage boys, and although they're around the same age, they couldn't be more different. Both Tico and alpha male Hananya are quite serious and prefer to keep an eye on proceedings from afar. But 14-year-old Arthur and 13-year-old Shamak are pretty silly and love larking around. If no one's there to have fun, that's fine. They can enjoy their own company just as much. Last of the boys is Simon. He's an intelligent chimp, but he can be quite selfish. Today, though, he's looking for fun, and he's trying to persuade alpha male Hananya to join in. Although playing is a bit out of the boss's comfort zone. Hananya has never been one to let loose, and his fun is over before it begins. But Simon's in the mood for messing around, and he can always count on Shemak to join in. Shemak loves playing the clown, and while Simon is a very bright and astute male, he's still in touch with his childish side. Alpha male Hananya prefers the more refined things in life, like grooming. It's a great way to reinforce friendship. Today, he's spending time with Tico. And it's hoped the sensible 13-year-old will become Hananya's right-hand man. Displays like this show it could be happening. Tico is the only other male in the group capable of leadership, and it would seal the troop if he became Hananya's second in command. Back with the orangutan nursery, it's time for the youngsters to check out their new home. And as predicted, it's cocky Gordon who's bravest. Come on, Gordon. Come on. This is probably because for the last seven years, he's spent time in the enclosure next door with one of the other groups. Gordon. Come on. Oh, yes. Gordon. Orangutans are the slowest movers of the great apes, but Gordon's keen, so this is quite speedy for him. So Gordon's come through so far, first prediction is right. Gordon's through bravest. Aris is following right behind. He's somewhere in the tunnel right now. Aris arrived at the park six months ago. He was very confident because of his rough and tumble beginnings growing up with a group of baby gorillas. But as he surveys his new surroundings, he's not so confident. Come on, Aris. 
and I expect eventually Ame, the curiosity will get the better of her and she'll come through and then after a while Xiao Ning. But I think Xiao Ning will take quite a while because she's quite shy. But Xiao Ning is sat in the window and her curiosity might tempt her across. Here you go. go on, honey. <laughs> hey, you. It's a good boy. Hi. Gordon is well settled into the enclosure, so he's tucking into breakfast. But Aris still needs a bit of encouragement from Jim. Such a good boy. 11-year-old R. May is next to cross the walkway. Hey, R. May. Here we go. But two-year-old Xiaoning is still showing no sign of wanting to leave the playroom. It's no good. The animal manager, Jeremy, has decided he'll have to carry her across. The enclosure is a work in progress, and a few design faults are showing. More hoses need to be put in because Aris is finding it difficult to climb. It's all part of what we were saying. It, this is now a fun thing for, for us because it's about designing, making, not for an ape, any ape. It's about designing and building for an orangutan. And they're loving it. I mean, you know, yeah, ours is just right great. Now. Yeah, look at yeah. that. I mean, that's just huge. At Monkey World Ape Rescue Center, in Paddy's chimp group, it's treat time, so the alpha male is exerting his dominance. On the menu are their favorites, corn and marrows. In the wild, all primates have seasonal changes in their diet, and this is replicated here at Monkey World. Corn is a particular summer favorite with the apes. In chimpanzee society, there is a strict pecking order, so alpha male Paddy and the high-ranking females get to tuck in first. For five-year-old Eddie, the youngest member of the clan, something unusual is happening. It's something that this confident youngster has not experienced before. Since birth, Eddie has been spoiled by her mum, Susie, and the rest of her chimp group. She's been given everything she wants and never had to wait for food. But over the last year, she's been losing her baby status, which means having to fend for herself, something she's clearly not happy about. Even low-ranking Pepper knows you've got to work hard to land the yellow stuff and keep hold of it. Frustrated, the cheeky toddler tries to steal a handful of marrow from second-in-command Jimmy. His look says it all. Not taking any chances, ex-lab chimp Clint stays high up out of the way so she can enjoy her treat in peace. 25-year-old Kathy is the cheeky upstart's next target. Kathy is quite a high-ranking lady who doesn't tend to give her food away. It seems Eddie's luck is quickly running out. Back in Moscow Zoo, slowly but surely, Mike is making quite an impression on baby Jolie. Her shy character and Mike's unfamiliar face have been a challenging combination. Jolie, drink of tea. Are you going to come over to see me? She says, no, maybe not. Not sure, are you? you? Oh, sorry. It hasn't been easy, but he is beginning to gain Jolie's trust. <laughs> Offering her favourite tipple helps. You nearly touched me then, Jolie. You can hold my hand even. Oh, a nice cup of tea. Good girl, Jolie. Good girl. And now she's starting to relax. He goes for the ultimate bribe, her favourite food. Yes, I know what I'm doing. Thank you. Jolie! Mike hasn't wanted to unnerve Jolie, so he's been cautious about physical contact. But today, he's keen to see how she reacts to being handled by him. <coughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I may stand up and walk. 
It looks like Jolie feels brave enough to accept a new friend. Good girl. She's got plenty of her security blankets here and a cushion underneath. And if you look, she's actually holding on to me with her hand. But she's not crying. You know, she could actually be, be, be screaming her head off. Um, but she's not. Are you? Which is done. Which is, I know it's really quite hard to understand what's happening. Should we have a look around here? This is a good dog. Well, we have a Mike's 25 years of experience hand-rearing baby primates means he knows what to do in most situations. But they can always surprise you. You can have all sorts of... I know you have such a big mouth. And those teeth are so strong. Dear me. Dear me. What a little hooligan. What a little hooligan. It's a big scary thing for, you know, a little baby like that to meet somebody new. Um, and what we've just done now is we, we've just ended on a good note. It's better to go away and leave her wanting more of me. So she now um, has gone for a little lie down and, and hopefully she's now thinking <laughs> that, oh, that wasn't so bad. Tomorrow, Jolie will be starting a new life nearly 1,600 miles away at Monkey World. But now, Mike and the Russian keepers must prepare for the six-hour trip. <laughs> Back at the park, in Paddy's group, it seems Eddie is not going to give up. For the last five years, she's been used to getting what she wants when she wants. But as she's growing up, the rule book is changing. Eddie is a stubborn young lady and is frustrated by chimp etiquette. Just like human children, temper tantrums are part of life. And poor Zoe is finding herself right in the middle of Eddie's. It's going to take some time for this youngster to get used to not having her own way. But in the meantime, she can seek comfort in a game of chase with prankster Gamba. Down at the far end of the park, it's also snack time for the stump-tailed macaques. But let's hope there are no tantrums for these affectionately nicknamed ugly monkeys. Their treat is something new, large citrus fruits called pomelos. In the wild, fruit is a particular favorite, but they also eat insects, small birds, grubs, and nuts. Sam makes a beeline for the treats hanging up, while the boss, Scott, checks out the one the others haven't spotted. Stump tails are notoriously lazy, and as these pomelos are not familiar food, it doesn't take long for both boys to lose interest. High-ranking David doesn't want to be left out and has a go at the chopped up pieces, but he's far too lazy and gives up easily. Sam is keen to get his hands on as many segments as he can and being the most intelligent in the group, he's sure there's a way. Placing the fruit throughout the enclosure gives them all a chance to sample the pink flesh and it means even low-ranking Paddy can have a try. Eating the segments first is a smart move by Sam. The pith of the fruit is thick, so this way it's easier to get to the tangy stuff. With the high-ranking individuals paying the pomelos little attention, the low-ranking troops decide it's their turn. Determined, Paddy scores a piece and heads off. Tim's even managed to grab a whole one. Macaques have cheek pouches that store food so they can keep on feeding and eat what's stashed later. Tim's making full use of his. As well as being mouth-watering, this fruit is a highly nutritious, low-calorie food source for the macaques, so they're a perfect treat. It's early morning at Moscow Zoo. And for baby Jolie, today she will finally join the growing population of orangutans in Monkey World. Her Russian keepers are making the journey with her to the UK, but when they leave, Mike will be the only person she knows. So over the last few days, he's been getting to know her so that the move goes smoothly. Despite the unsociable hour, She's getting a big send-off. 
The zoo has clearly taken extremely good care of her, but for Jolie's sake, they know the time has come for her to move and grow up with other orangutans. Before leaving for the six hour trip ahead, a few last minute preparations are made to stop her feeling cold on the journey. This little one is not used to the sub-zero temperatures outdoors. In the wild, orangutans live in the tropics, and here at the zoo, the temperature has been regulated to match. <laughs> With everything ready, the team set off on their trip to England. Well, it's half past four in the morning. Um, we've had about two hours sleep. Jolie's in the front seat, so it's all systems go. We hope we've covered absolutely everything. You know, Jolie's got her flight numbers, her passport, her papers and everything. Looking forward to it immensely. With such a precious cargo, everyone is rushed straight through the airport. Because Jolie is only eight months old, special travel arrangements have been made for her. This is the first time an orangutan has ever been allowed in the passenger cabin, and Mike couldn't be happier. And she's really fine, she's taking it great. Um, so the next step is um, getting out at the other end. So um, it's pretty exciting, it's all going well. So fingers crossed for a safe journey and a happy landing. Um, monkey world, here we come. Next time, Jolie settles in at Monkey World. She's a pretty little girl. Yeah. Alice has been through the, the wars to, to bring this little girl in. Cute. But she's not the day's only orangutan arrival. It's a girl. I just sat here with her. She's, she's good, she's calm. 